Hey everybody, David here, and this is another Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition Class Breakdown Tutorial. And this particular tutorial this evening deals with the Sorcerer Archetype, the Wild Magic Sorcerer's Origin. Now the Sorcerer is a really neat and a really quirky type of caster in D&D 5e. There's a lot of mechanics that are not like your traditional type of caster, like a wizard. Now, you're going to get these Sorcerer points, and your spell slots that you can cast from level 1 to 9. You can sell your sorcery points and trade them in for spell slots if you're short. And you can also do the exact opposite. If you're short in sorcery points, you can buy, well, you can sell your spell slots, and that's using the, the Font of Magic feature. And along with Font of Magic, you get Meta Magic, which is a good way to spend your sorcery points. You're going to get your universal proficiency bonus like every other class in D&D 5e. You're going to get lots of ability score improvements. And at the end, you're going to get your Sorcerer's Restoration, which allows you to get back in, uh, four sorcery points on a short rest. Now, to go on top of all of this that you already get for the Sorcerer, at level 1, you get to choose a, an archetype, which is really different than a lot of the other classes in 5e because most of the other classes they have to choose their archetype at level 2 or level 3 so starting at level 1 the sorcerer they get they get more class features you know just coupled and stacked right on top of everything that they get so let's go ahead and let's take a look at the wild magic sorcerer's origin Wild magic is where your innate magic comes from the wild forces of chaos that underlie the order of creation. You might have endured exposure to some form of raw magic, perhaps through a planner portal leading to limbo, the elemental planes, or the mysterious far realm. Perhaps you were blessed by a powerful fate creature, or marked by a demon. Or maybe even your magic could be a fluke of your birth with no apparent cause of rhyme or reason. However it came to be, however you gained your wild magic powers, this chaotic magic churns within you, waiting for any outlet to reach out. And the wild magic is just exactly what it says. You have all kinds of possibilities for something that could go really good for you, or something that could go really bad and really wrong for you. Not only you, but everyone around you. So let's go ahead and take a look at level one when you choose a sorcerer's origin, wild magic. You will get wild magic surge. So starting when you choose this origin at first level, your spell casting can unleash surges of untamed magic. Immediately after you cast a sorcerer's spell of first level or higher, the dungeon master can have you roll a d20. If you roll a one on that d20, you will take a wild ride on the magic surge table to create a random magical effect. So basically, if you're casting cantrips all the time, you don't have to worry about this. But as soon as you start using your spell slots, you need to start worrying about this because your dungeon master, every roll, can literally have you you know, do a d20. And I have, I have a wild magic uh, sorcerer in my group, and I actually have him cast on the wild surge table. Well, I have him roll a d20 every time. And a lot of times he will roll a 1. A, a lot of times, actually. Sometimes two or three times a game. So, you know, the wild magic surges can be really fun, and they can actually add a lot of drama to the game, too, and excitement. So Dungeon Masters, definitely make sure you're making your wild magic sorcerers roll on that table. Well, have them roll that d20. And, you know, just take into consideration, you don't have to worry about cantrips. They won't be affected. Now, here is that wild magic surge table. Really cool. Look at all these different things. And you roll a d100. So if you do roll that 1 on the d20, you roll 1 through 100. Roll a d100. If you roll a 7 or 8, here's a couple examples. You will cast Fireball as a third level spell centered on yourself. Ouch for you and your party mates. You can also have something good. If you roll a 9 or a 10, you cast Magic Missiles, a 5th level spell. That's a lot of orbs. You could also have a chance to cast Levitate on yourself. Or, you know, if you die within the next minute, you immediately come back to life as if by the Reincarnate spell. So there's a lot of good things and also a lot of bad things that can happen to you on the Wild Magic Surge table. So 
like I said, this class is really fun, and it's probably one of the more popular classes in Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition. I know a lot of people play these wild magic sorcerers. Now, also at level 1, you're going to get another class feature called Tides of Chaos. And this is where you can manipulate the forces of chance and chaos to gain advantage on one attack roll. Pretty cool. It can be an attack roll, ability check, or saving throw. So once you do this, once you use Tides of Chaos, you must finish a long rest before you can use Tides of Chaos again. Now, here's another little quirky thing that your Dungeon Master can make you do. Now, any time that you use Tides of Chaos and you cannot use it, uh, you can actually have a chance to regain this feature, uh, and that can be if your Dungeon Master has you roll automatically on the Wild Surge table. That's pretty crazy. And if you do that, then immediately uh, after you cast your Sorcerer's Spell of first level or higher, then you'll get to reuse the Tides of Chaos feature. So it's pretty nice. It's a nice little quirk that uh, Dungeon Masters can actually kind of reward you. But then again, is taking a roll on the Wild Magic Surge table sometimes a reward or sometimes a, r a risk? So very nice uh, Tides of Chaos. Now at level 6, you are going to get Bend Luck. And this is where you have the ability to twist fate using your wild magic. When another creature you can see makes an attack roll, an ability check, or a saving throw, you can use your reaction, as long as you have one left, to spend two sorcery points to roll a 1d4 and apply the number rolled as a bonus or a penalty, which will be your choice to the creature's roll. Now, you'll see that the key word here is creature. Creatures mean anyone. Creature can mean you. Creature can mean an enemy. Creature can mean an ally. So you can do that 1d4 and apply the number positively or negatively to the creature's roll. And it can be the saving throw, the ability check, or the attack roll. So you can do this after the creature rolls, but before any effects of the roll occur. So you just need to make sure you say, stop him real quick and say, whoa, 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 whoa. I think I'm going to go ahead and have you, uh, well, I'm going to go ahead and bend luck, and I'm going to add to your spell, or I'm going to take away from your spell. So really nice. I like bend luck. Controlled Chaos, you're going to get this uh, wild magic feature at level 14. And Control Chaos uh, lets you gain a modicum of control over the surges of your wild magic. So... Whenever you roll on the Wild Magic Surge table, you can roll twice and use either number. So, that's a pretty nice feature. You can roll twice, one good thing happens, one bad thing happens. Depending on the situation, you can go with that roll. I really like the uh, level 14 feature, Controlled Chaos. Next up is the last and final feature that you're going to get, and that's at level 18, and this is Spell Bombardment. So the harmful energy of your spell intensifies. When you roll damage for a spell and roll the highest number possible on any of the dice, choose one of those dice, roll it again, and add that roll to the damage. You can use the feature only once per turn. Straightforward, you roll 3d8, you roll an 8, you can just re-roll that 8, and if it rolls another 8, then you can add 8 more damage, and that is spell bombardment. That's really nice. But remember, you can only use the feature once per turn. So that's everything for the Sorcerer's Origin, for the Sorcerer Wild Magic. I hope you guys and I hope you guys enjoyed the uh, the video here, the tutorial. Please feel free to leave a comment down below. Also, subscribe to the YouTube channel. And if you want to try one of these Wild Magic Sorcerers, go to my website at tabletopping.net. I have over 840 character sheets on three-page PDFs that you can just download and take to your game. D&D 5e, every class, every level, every archetype at your disposal. So thank you guys so much. Leave a comment down below, and I'll see you next time.